Heidi ho, Heidi ho. We're back, folks. This is the Detroiter. I am your host, Nick Bradley. We're covering sports in the Motor City and the Mitten State. We're presented to you today by a couple beautiful spots, a couple staples of the Detroit community, the Michigan community, the sports community, the national comedic and entertainment community. We're brought to you today by the Second String and the SecondString.com for all your vintage street and sportswear needs. I'm telling you, March, we're here. Tournament, we're here. March Madness, we're here. Go grab your MSU basketball, your Michigan basketball, get your baseball stuff, maybe buying a couple fully torqued shirts. We'll get this whole lockout thing situation figured out. I don't know. Go check that out at the second string. All kinds of good stuff there. We're always posting new stuff. And today we are presented to you for the third time, I believe, by Detroit Sports Nation. Number one spot, number one outlet for all things Detroit sports, certainly on the internet, but I would say in the world too, in my humble, unbiased opinion. Check them out, Detroit Sports Nation. We're going to be working together from now on for this foreseeable future. They reached out to me, great guys. We're working together. We're helping each other out. It's people helping people. Shout out to Vince Vaughn. Let's get into it today. So on Wednesday's episode, we talked a little bit about Michigan State and uh, Michigan. We talked about Michigan State beating Maryland over the weekend. Well, wouldn't you know it, Michigan State and Maryland are going to meet again. I'm recording this on Wednesday. They're going to meet again on Thursday. We have the Big Ten tournament. It is upon us. And then shortly after that, next weekend, March Madness, the big dance will start. So tonight's like the warm up. This weekend is the salsa dance you do with that girl at the bar in Miami. And you're like, Hey, will you teach me to salsa? That's kind of your pickup line. Sure. It plays. It works for a good 20 minutes, but then she's like, wait a second. I don't care about this guy. He's here on vacation. He probably doesn't want to marry me and grow up in a white picket fence, all that stuff. I'll teach him to salsa for 15 and we'll bounce. And then you go to the real dance. Then you slow it down a little foxtrot a little ballroom dancing. You prepare, you pay for those lessons so you don't embarrass yourself at the first dance in front of her family, her dad watching you like, this guy's got two left feet. My daughter's really marrying a kid with two left feet. This is the small dance. This is the salsa warm up we got this weekend. I said it a little bit last week. And by the way, I don't know how long today's episode will be because I don't really have much to say outside of just, I guess, a vibe check for March, a March vibe check, both for Michigan and Michigan State. We touched on it on Wednesday, but I just want to dive a little bit further in. There's really nothing Pistons related. They lost today to the Bulls. It was a good game. Um, The Red Wings, we talked about them on Wednesday. Lions, not much happening. Once we get a little closer to the draft, we'll start diving into the Lions. And then college football, there's nothing going on. And baseball, we know that story. So we'll do a little bit of college hoops and we'll call it the vibe for March. I just, I just want to check the vibe. I want to dip my toe in the water. How are you guys doing? Is it scalding hot? Is it a little chilly? Is it just how you like it? Between you and me, it's a little chilly. I'm a little loose. I'm a little detached this season, this March. Usually March rolls around. The, the, the calendar changes from February to March, and I get goosebumps. I wake up that night, February 28th. Midnight hits, I wake up just goosebumps, like more bumped out than you've ever been in your entire life. Not a bump to be found this March. 12.01, March 1st, in the morning. Nick Bradley's laying like a church mouse. Not a bump to be found. No topographical differences in the two-minute range there. Nothing. No telltale signs of, hey, you know what? January, February is a... mm." This year, it feels more like January, February, March. And that sucks. That sucks. When you're a college basketball fan and you're a college basketball school and it's January, February, March and not January, February, Izzo, that's tough to wrap the head around. It's tough for this part of your body and it's tough for, you know what I'm saying, downstairs, the nuts and two veg or the nuts and veg, whatever the Austin, what's he say, the, the twig and two berries, whatever Austin Powers says. It's a tough time of the year. When you don't have that flame, you don't have that burning desire and it's March and you're just kind of flaccid. You're a steamed carrot. I don't want to be a steamed carrot. I'd like to be a raw carrot, freshly picked, firm as ever, sturdy as can be. Not this time. I said it on Wednesday. I'll say it again. To sum up my feelings coming into this off season this March or postseason, not off season. 
I would say my overarching feeling above all anything else is okay, let's get it over with. You know how fucked up that is to say, okay, let's get it over with. It's Michigan state. I'm a fan of Tom Izzo is our head basketball coach. We pull in four and five star recruits every single year. This is supposed to be one of my favorite times of the year. I am supposed to wake up every day in March counting down the seconds until Michigan State's next game tips off. I'm supposed to spend every waking moment communicating with my friends. Hey, where are we going? Where, what bar are we going to? State plays at four. What game? Where are we going? Where? What shirt am I going to wear? State's playing. Positive vibes only. Ripping TikToks. Ripping podcasts. I'm supposed to be making these podcasts. Like, Do you guys remember last season? Hopefully some of you have been around since then. I could not stop talking about Michigan State basketball. I wouldn't have even told you that the Tigers, the Red Wings, or the Pistons existed. Every single day from March 1st forward until that that season ended, every single day I was waking up and it was Michigan State. The first thing I thought of in the morning was, we got Illinois at the Breslin tonight. The second thing I thought of is Aaron Henry cannot be stopped. The third thing I thought of is, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I think something might. Granted, it didn't, but we had Aaron Henry. We cooked at the end of the year. There was belief. There was magic in the air. It did feel like the calendar turned from February to Izzo and not February to March. This year, I don't have one single feeling anywhere near that level. I don't have one guy that I'm like, hey, at least we got this guy. Last year, I don't care who we play. I don't care how many days rest we had. I don't care what the circumstances are. If Aaron Henry suits up and goes, we'll have a chance. This year, we don't have one guy that I look at and go, hey, as long as he's out there, we got a chance. Not a not a single guy. Not a single guy. Not A.J. Hogard. Not Gabe Brown. Not Malik Hall. Not a single guy where I say, if he's playing, we're going to have a chance. We could have the full lineup, dude, dressed to the nines. Be our guest. Be our guest. Everything and more. And I'd go into the game like, mm, I don't know. Maybe they'll do something. Probably not. That's where I'm at. It's fucked. It's messed up, dude. It's not how I want to feel. You guys know me by this point. I'm as positive vibes as it gets. I am Mr. Let's roll as it gets. I am Mr. Hey, we got nothing to lose as it gets. If I'm going to be honest and I'm nothing, if not honest, my March vibe check right now, coming into tournament season, where I'm at, where my heart lies when I wake up in the morning and someone says, my buddy texts me, what do we think? What do we think about state tonight? My heart goes dark. I feel like the ice King or the night King in Thrones, just white walkers attack sparing. No soul, no sense of humanity can be found. Just ice cold, dead. That's how I feel when I think, hey, how do you like Michigan state in the tournament? Dead. Fucking the villain, pessimistic, no feeling at all. Like someone removed my heart from my body and yet I still live. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. And I'll be fully honest with you. And this one might cut deep. I think Michigan's got higher potential than MSU. Now we saw Michigan absolutely whoop state's ass a week or two ago. I think Michigan, not that they're a great team, not that they should have any reason to go, hey, why not us? You got Hunter Dickinson. So as long as you got him, he's your Aaron Henry. As long as he's on the floor, I don't know, you'll have a chance. There's always the off chance that he could go out and dominate. He could make every pass, and all of a sudden your guys are hitting wide open threes. I'll tell you what, most games you play this tournament season, if you're a Wolverine fan, that other team is going to go, you know what, I'm not really scared or concerned with anybody else on the court that's not wearing number one. We're going to go after Dickinson. Every time he touches it in the post, we are going to swarm that dude like stink on rice. And if he passes it out and someone hits an open three, then guess what? We're going to make that no-name bum that just came off the bench. We'll make them hit 15 no-name threes. And if that's how we lose, then that's how we lose. I think you have a chance when that's the game plan. Anytime the other team dares you to shoot, when you're Michigan and you're not a great three-point shooting team and you don't have a ton of guys outside of Dickinson that have done a lot this year, Sure, you don't probably feel great about that, but you will have a chance. When I look at the way Michigan State plays, 
I don't really know how it is that they play. I don't really know what it is the strategy would be. Okay, Michigan State, let's say they're a seven seed. You're going against the two. I don't really know what the game plan is. This is how we're going to beat these guys. I don't know what that looks like. What, what, Tyson Walker decides to shoot? Tyson Walker realizes you're actually allowed to score. I know you're the point guard, and a huge part of your game is making plays for others and coming off screens and looking for the next pass and making reads where the defense is going. I know that's a huge responsibility of the point guard position, but you're actually allowed to score too, Tyson. You're allowed to shoot it at the orange thing. The orange is allowed to go in the orange when it leaves your hand. That That's that's part of the game, actually. That's actually encouraged. But believe this or not, some of the best point guards to ever play the game were not only great passers and playmakers, they were incredible at making the orange ball go in the orange ring. Believe it or not, it's it's encouraged. It's a vital piece of the game, especially when it comes to your team finding success. That's the game plan for State, I suppose. But what makes me nervous and what makes me feel the way that I do, cold, decrepit, dead, pushing up daisies, the way that makes me feel like that is the fact that that has to have been the game plan for the last two months, certainly the last month, probably longer, probably month and a half, probably two months, probably since the new year, where each night I would bet Tom Izzo's pulling Tyson Walker say, hey, Tyson, come here, Tyson. Hey, buddy, what's going on, pal? You're the point guard. You know what? You know, this is why you came to Michigan State to run the show. Look at some of my best teams. Look at some of my greatest achievements. Why did those teams come about? What was so successful? What's the common denominator? Cassius Winston, Kalen Lucas, Corey Lucius, Denzel Valentine, Mateen. What's the common denominator, Tyson? Every single one of those teams, the point guard is the man not only running the show, he's the man leading the team. He's the man who brings the the aggression and the energy. And he's the man who fulfills the game plan and executes the game plan and orchestrates everything each and every night. If you can't be that guy, we're not going to stand a chance. And the reason I have to believe that Tom Izzo's been saying that night in and night out for two months now is it's Tom Izzo. You don't get 663 Big Ten victories on accident. It's Tom Izzo. He's coached for 27, 28 years. He's been to eight Final Fours. He's the same guy who coached and recruited and developed all of those great point guards I just listed. He has done this before. He knows what successful basketball looks like. He knows how to achieve that level of basketball, that level of play from his point guard. He understands. If if I'm supposed to sit here and believe that Tom Izzo doesn't realize Tyson Walker being aggressive and finding his stride is the key to unlock this Michigan State team, then what can I believe? What? 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 What am I supposed to believe? I know Santa Claus isn't real. Next, you're going to tell me Tom Izzo doesn't know what he's doing. I just can't believe that. I have to believe that Izzo is known for months that Tyson Walker is the key because it's Tom Izzo. And if he doesn't know that, and if he hasn't been harping on that for two months, then I can't believe anything. I can't believe that the sun will come up tomorrow. I can't believe that the sky is blue. I can't believe that my mother loves me. I can't believe anything if I can't believe that Tom Izzo has been in Tyson's ear all season long. So for that reason, for that belief of mine, that inherent belief, that inherent truth that Tom Izzo has in fact, Ben and Tyson's earwax for the last two months. That is what gives me the deceased feeling. That is what makes me a cold, stony, horrific fi- figure. He's been telling them for two months, and I've seen it one time. I've seen it one time. One time over the course of two months. And since that one time, I haven't seen it again in multiple games. So I don't understand and I want to be positive vibes and I want to, it's a new season and it's Tom Izzo and Izzo's teams are different in the month of, in the month of March. And we have some leaders, we have some veteran guys that have been here before that have made tournament runs that know what it takes to do it and are hungry to do it. I am supposed to believe 
that even though I know, I know in my heart, Tom Izzo, he knows, and he's been harping and preaching to Tyson Walker that he's the key to this team. Yet for the last two months, despite Tom Izzo's pleas, Tyson Walker hasn't done it more than a single time. How am I supposed to go look at this tournament knowing that Tyson Walker is the key and go, yeah, I feel good. That's what, that's what we call lying. That's what we call dishonesty. I don't feel good. I don't trust Tyson Walker. And I know he is the key. We've seen it. The first half of the year, go back and look at Michigan State. When we were ranked in the top 20, when we were ranked in the top 15, when we were ranked in the top 10, when we were whooping Wisconsin's ass at the Kohl Center, what was the common denominator in that first half of the year? Tyson Walker was playing great. A.J. Hogard was playing well, too. Malik Hall was playing well. Gabe Brown was playing well. For sure, many guys were playing well. Tyson Walker was playing great. Because guess what? Later in the season, Gabe Brown was still playing pretty well. Malik Hall was still playing well. Tyson Walker wasn't. All of a sudden, we start dropping games. All of a sudden, we're a 500 basketball team. We have one guy that this whole thing depends on. He's the fulcrum. He's the engine. And he doesn't want to churn. He doesn't want to convert carbon or no what is it what does an engine do he doesn't want to convert energy into or fuel into energy god I, i took thermodynamics do you know how pathetic that is that i can't even come up with those words he doesn't want to be the guy though long story short he's not interested i don't know why don't know why you'd come to michigan state and be the point guard if you're not interested in the opportunity that tyson walker has before him but he isn't so for that reason I have a hard time getting on board. When I look at Michigan, and here's the fucked up part. When I look at Michigan, I don't hate their team. I don't love their team. I think their issue is the same as Michigan State's. They don't have a very dynamic player. They don't have a stallion at either of the guard positions where you can just, hey, let's give this dude the ball. Everybody else clear out. We'll get him a pick and roll. He's either going to make the right pass. He's going to take a good jump shot or he'll get to the rim, maybe get fouled or finish. They don't have that guy. They do have Hunter Dickinson. Just throw it to him in the post. Let him work. But the problem with Hunter Dickinson is, A, like we mentioned earlier, the double team comes. Now Hunter Dickinson's eliminated. Now you're back to needing Eli Brooks, Devontae Jones, Diabate Houston. You're back to needing those guys to make shots which isn't the worst strategy, those four guys taking wide open threes all night, you're going to have a chance to win the game. And if they're shooting the ball at a 35% rate, 30% even, you probably will win the game. The other issue is you're going to run into a team, depending the further you go, the certainty increases. You're going to run into a team with a Kofi Coburn, with a Zach Eady, with one of these guys that all of a sudden Hunter Dickinson doesn't look so big. Hunter Dickinson's repeated left hook that he does 19 times a game doesn't look so sneaky or impressive or overpowering. All of a sudden that happens and the guys outside don't have wide open threes. Now you get into a little bit of trouble because you don't have the other guy that can, hey, get him a pick and roll. He'll make the right pass every time. He'll take the right shot every time. Now you don't have that guy. That's where you get into trouble if you're Michigan. They do have more to work with than MSU does. I do believe that. I don't think they'll go very far. I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan made the second weekend. I think they're also such a wacky back and forth team. Like they can look incredible when they played Michigan state a couple weeks ago, they looked unbelievable. They looked like they beat the piston. They looked like the team that was ranked sixth coming into the year. They looked like a team that it, you guys were on the bubble. You guys are on the bubble. How the hell does that make any sense? That's how they played against MSU. And then they'll have nights where it's, you guys do know that um, the way Ben Simmons plays, never shooting threes, never practicing threes, you do, that's not ideal, right? Like, I know he's in the NBA. I know he dated Kendall Kardashian, like pretty sweet dude, right? Not a bad guy you would think to model your game after. Not necessarily, though. You should be practicing threes. Just because Ben Simmons doesn't, doesn't mean you shouldn't either. You should shoot three-pointers. You should make three-pointers. You're a guard in college in Division I basketball at Michigan. 
you should make some three pointers. They're very Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And we've seen that with state. We see that with every college basketball team. That's kind of the beauty of college hoops. Certainly if the Mr. Hyde shows up, they're toast. If Mr. Hyde, Michigan, they can't make a shot. Hunter Dickinson's kind of struggling with whoever the opposing team big is. You're gone. See ya. Forget about it. Juwan Howard might kill the guy for beating him in the tournament. You're gone. Your coach might be in prison. Forget just getting fired. He may be in prison for the rest of his life. And that's how this thing's going to turn out. If they play well, if they can be Dr. Jekyll long enough, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they win a couple in the tournament. I don't think that means, oh, they might sneak into an Elite Eight or they might sneak into a Final Four. That's crazy. I don't think that's possible. I It would be – I don't even know. I'd let anybody live here for free for a year if that happened. But wouldn't be surprised if they made it to the second weekend. I think they could beat a good team. I think they could beat a top two, three seed if they had to. Hunter Dickinson, if you don't have an answer for him, you don't have a big man that is a real anchor on your defense, he can give you some fucking problems. You look outside, Caleb Houston, Musa Diabate, I feel like Diabate will have nights where he just realizes, wait, wait a second. It's like Peter Parker putting on the Spidey suit, like, whoa, I'm actually a, a lottery pick. I'm actually 50 times more athletic than any of these kids that are banking on their, their math degree working out for them. I actually can just own everybody on this court. I'm actually really good at this, and they're actually very, very average compared to the level I'm at. Musa Diabate has those nights too where he can just go out and dominate. I think between Diabate, between Hunter Dickinson, Devontae Jones had a great game. I think it was against Ohio State, maybe the game before that. Caleb Houston. I think you have enough pieces and enough firepower for Michigan where you don't even need necessarily all of them to click on a night to get you a win. Hunter Dickinson just has a day. You're going to have a great chance of winning. Michigan State, Hunter Dickinson absolutely nuts on the table does. Hunter Dickinson absolutely dominated MSU. They won the game handily, was never even close, was never even fun, was never even a competition. As a matter of fact, it was fucking pathetic, embarrassing, and a disgrace for MSU. Musa Diabate, same deal. He can have a game where he just gets you 28, 8, and 5, and it's like, wait a second, we have LeBron James again in college? LeBron James Jr. goes to the goes the U of M. I thought he was still at Sierra Canyon. No, he's wearing 14 for the maize and blue. He has games like that too, where it doesn't matter who's out there. It doesn't matter how Hunter Dickinson's playing. It doesn't matter how many lottery picks the other team has. Musa Diabate is going to go ahead and just be the best player on the floor. And guess what? He's so athletic. He's so long and freakish, just like designed in a lab to dunk basketballs that it doesn't matter who he's going against. He is going to get his, and he is going to let you know he's getting his. And in the process, Michigan's going to have a phenomenal chance at winning the basketball game. You sprinkle in, Hunter plays okay. Eli Brooks makes a couple shots, and they become very challenging to beat. Michigan's issue is that doesn't happen very frequently. The Musa Diabate hold the phone, I'm actually a lottery pick game, doesn't come very often. The Hunter Dickinson, you cannot stop the left jump hook the rock the fuck what the, what is it the expendables couldn't stop the hunter dickinson turn around left-handed baby hook those games don't happen enough for them they can though and you would think if they're going to it would be march with all of the stakes with the win or go home mentality there is no ah you know what sorry coach i'll play better next time i'll practice those baby hooks i'll get him to go next time no that doesn't exist anymore. You either make them tonight or we're done. You're back at home eating Cheez-Its and flipping through Seinfeld. I don't think it's going to happen enough, even if it does. I don't think it'll happen enough or frequently that they make it out of the second weekend, but I do think there is the possibility they make it to the second weekend. That's how I feel about U of M. And it pains me to say it because I really don't feel that way about state and I want to come on here. And I want to set the tone. Listen, this is coming out on Friday. They played last night against Maryland. That game may have been, they passed with flying colors. Might have been 80 to 40. Michigan State just wipes them. 
they may have lost that game. They may have had a nail biter and squeaked one out at the end. That game could have gone a multitude of ways. I don't know. I'm recording this the day before that game. I don't know how that game won. I don't know how it will go. What I do know is this. Going into this tournament season, and even if they lose to Maryland and it's over, one and done, Big Ten tournament, you're out, gear up for March Madness. I want to so badly come on here and give you guys, hey, maybe, you know, Gabe was putting up 15 a night. It wasn't so long ago. Max Christie, we've waited all season long. Like, the shots are going to fall. You've seen his form. He can shoot the ball. The kid has been coached. The kid looks like a professional when he takes jump shots. They just, he hasn't gotten him to go in. Malik Hall, when he wants, looks like Kobe Bryant mixed with Michael Jordan on the low block. That turnaround, it's unguardable when he's feeling it. A.J. Hogard, when he attacks and is smart, most of all, smart, doesn't turn the ball over. He creates for others. He can get downhill. He can get to the rim. Tyson Walker, we've talked about plenty. Those exist. Those those X factors exist, and I would love to come on and just be like, yes, this is going to happen. Gabe's maybe, probably last tournament, he's going to come out balling. Marcus Bingham, he's going to go back to be – like maybe he can just be what he was in the first half. All of that exists, and if all of that happens, Bingham's out here blocking shots. Malik Hall's hitting the turnaround. Gabe Brown's just drilling him from three. Max Christie's getting shots off the dribble. If all of that happens, then yes, absolutely, State's a dangerous team. If that happens, if that all comes together, like the gods of basketball blessing everyone in East Lansing and abroad, then yes, Michigan State has potential. And yes, they could make the second weekend. And yes, maybe even further. But I haven't seen that all come together one single time the entire season. Not once. Because even when they were playing well, Max Christie's never really found a stroke. And even when they were winning some games, Tyson Walker wasn't being quite so aggressive. And even when Malik Hall was putting the team on his back and looking like prime Michael Jordan, Gabe Brown's not making shots. And even when Gabe was making those shots and averaging 15 a night, all of a sudden Marcus Bingham's getting three minutes of run and then getting pulled for Julius Marble. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. And even when everyone's playing well, Tom Izzo can't quite figure out, oh, who should I, who do I play Hauser with? Oh, Hauser's been getting torched for the last 14 minutes in the post, but he's made a three two weeks ago, so I'll just leave him in. It, they just haven't been able to get everything to come together at the right time for the right amount of success. And I'm just at a point where I've tried time and time again over the course of this year, game and game and game this year where, hey, no, tonight, come on, playing Michigan in Ann Arbor. If that doesn't get the boys up, if that doesn't get us out of this rut, I don't know what will. Come on. I've tried it. <sighs> Pathetic. Fucking loser. Hey, come on. We just beat Purdue. This team's feeling good again. We got our swagger back. Tyson Walker hit that shot. He's going to be more aggressive. <laughs> what a dumb thing to say. What a dumb way to feel. What an ignorant moron would have faith in this team after that. So I've done it, and I've tried, and I've thought about it, and I've talked about it with my friends. I just I, – I hope they figure something out. I hope Max Christie looks like Clay Thompson for the next three weeks. I hope A.J. Hogarth is Baron Davis. I hope Tyson Walker is Steph Curry. I hope Marcus Bingham is Jaron Jackson. I hope Malik calls Michael Jordan. I hope all of these guys play to their absolute maximum potential and come together as a unit like we have not seen at all this season. Because if they do, the potential's there. If they do, a run will be there. If they do, let's buy in. It will be fun. Even if they lose in the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight, it will be more fun than the rest of the season combined. And it'll be able to give all of us as fans a, a feeling of, I knew they could do something. If they can do that, they'll be able to do so. The problem is they haven't done it once this season. I don't know why I'm supposed to buy in now. But on that note, let's see, fellas. Let's see. You got nothing to lose. There is no pressure. There are no expectations. There's just basketball. There's just March Madness. There's just January, February, Izzo. There's just lay it on the line and see what the fuck happens. You're Michigan State. This is March. Figure something out. Go green. Go green. That's all I got today. 
Michigan fans, Michigan State fans alike, enjoy March. Enjoy the runs if your team has them. Appreciate you listening. We will be back next week.